from the new day. Give me that whole year. Give it to me. I need it. Hello and a very warm welcome to the Gimme Whole Year Wrestling Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are reviewing the September the 4th issue of Smackdown and wow, what a night and what a lot to talk about. Um, I've done four videos today so it's awesome. Thank you everyone that's been there and supported through the live stream, through the WCW watch along, through the live stream of Raw uh, Smackdown and obviously the AOP video that I made quickly. It's uh awesome that you guys are really investing in the channel and spending time so thank you so much and um, as normal i'm going to go through my review first and then i'll answer any comments and questions or anything else that you've got what did i think of smackdown that was really good i really got into it this week um this felt like last week we had payback and a lot happened i don't know why my light's gone on my camera i'm looking really white but whatever uh, last week there was payback happened and there was so many title changes and stuff at Payback that Raw, we was expecting it to be a good show, and it, and it was a mess. It was an absolute mess. But this SmackDown, like, delivered on everything that Raw should have delivered, really. Um, so, first of all, we obviously get Roman Reigns out to do a promo. Don't like him going to the top of the ramp, standing there where the canned booze are playing, like, trying to recreate that Undertaker moment. But you can't do it with canned sound, guys. But he gets into the ring. Hamo, Heyman put, cuts a promo that's really seething. He's sort of whispering it as he's, he's so, talking about what's going to happen next with Roman. And then, thankfully, Roman got to speak as well. Because I think part of the issue we're putting him in is Roman just stood there like a puppet for most of it. And even Brock could have sort of a bit of a laugh with him and then sort of mess about a little bit. But... Roman wasn't doing that and anyway when he spoke eventually he sort of made his intentions clear that he was ready to to win all as as he sort of says um then we went backstage briefly with Roman and we see him meet Jay Uso Jay Uso is says to him that he's uh he's he's there for him dog he's there for him oh I'm so proud of you the family's so proud of you we're so proud of you Obviously still thinking that Roman's some sort of face, even though he's not, and saying that he's got Paul Heyman under control. Uh, Paul Heyman, in his promo, even said, like, look, I'm not turning Roman. Roman's turned me, which sort of makes no sense. But the, the ultimate thing is, it's definitely not Paul Heyman who is changing Roman. And that needs to be established. And they did that. So I was happy with that. Um, then we go into the first match. Um, the first match was Heavy Machinery. They made their entrance and a match against Miz and Morrison. It was fine. I mean, it was the sort of goofy stuff that we see from Heavy Machinery. They got some good moves in, though, man. And Morrison's so tidy in the ring. Uh, also, the entrance of Miz and Morrison with the pyros was brilliant. Like, the slow motion with the pyros as well. Like, spot on, whoever's timing that. Well played. Uh, really good. Really good. Um, Miz and Morrison... Um, there's there's a sort of tease for the, from going to for the briefcase early on. Uh, heavy machinery get the win, but while they're celebrating, um, Morrison takes a briefcase, steals the briefcase, steals the contract, and obviously we all know that that means nothing. But whatever, I mean it's part of the story, part of the comedy, whatever. Um, <laughs> I'm fine with it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, then backstage we get to see Big E. And he's with a couple of others. He's with Drew Gulak and the Lucha House Party. And they're all about to celebrate Xavier Woods' birthday. Xavier Woods is coming back. Also, we're led to believe Big E turns the corner and gets viciously attacked by Sheamus, who drops him with a, a great sort of uh, back suplex, uh, like an arid splash type thing, uh, onto a car windshield. Um, it takes Big E out of the Fatal 4-Way. The tease of him getting this push has been pushed back. Uh, later on, we'd get to find out that Jey Uso has put himself in his place and he's going to be the one that takes uh, Roman at Clash of Champions. And he says, you know, it'll be a fair competition and all this stuff. Really good stuff. And I'll, I'll sort of go more into the Jey Uso stuff when we get into the match at the end uh, for the number one contenders match. It's a white noise through a windshield. That's what it is. Really cool, man. Um so then we go, Biggie's taken off to hospital. Everyone's going in the ambulance. The Fiend's not in there anymore. It's okay. Uh, he's back in the funhouse. Um, 
Seamus cuts promo, laughing about it. Uh, smug, really smug. Really good stuff, actually, from Seamus. Seamus is looking great nowadays, man. I, I really like his new look. I know it's really sort of stereotypical Irish, but it's it's really sort of brawlery, and I like it. I like it. It suits it suits him. Uh, Bailey and Sasha Banks are interviewed backstage about the couple of weeks that they've had, the tough couple of weeks that they've had, and Sasha here is being really, really friendly and really okay with the situation that's happened over the last few weeks. Even though she's Sasha, no belts, she's she's really sort of happy about it. And this was great. It was all the right build for what it had to be. Um, then we get, <laughs> as the, uh, I think it was as Shayna and uh, Naya come out, we had a really funny uh, uh, promo. I hate the video screen promos normally. But they had Seamus and Cesaro do a little one of them saying that that if Bailey and Sasha win again, they can come and join them in the Champions Lounge, which is a really funny thing. I'm really enjoying that. And I think that's... Uh, Shinsuke did this thing where he, he made an innuendo and, and laughed about it. I thought it was great, man. I thought it was really funny. It was sort of mocking Big E at the same time. Great. Great. These two are great together. Then we had what was easily the best match of the night. Even though Nia Jax, like, when she's in the ring, it doesn't do much for me. But... My goodness, whoever's putting these matches together, the producer that's putting these matches to do together is doing an awesome job. We got the same similar beats to Payback, but with slight changes to them. Um, Shayna Baszler, man, she looks a beast in the ring at the minute. They're really sort of actually starting to embrace the the the, the assassin that is Shayna Baszler, like we saw in NXT. And they haven't been doing that, but they're now starting to, and it's really, really good. Um, the attack on Sasha's legs was really well told. It was constant throughout the match. My only sort of slight complaint would be that the it would have been nice if the ending had something to do with Sasha's legs as opposed to the crossbody from Naya from the top rope. But I understand it, man. I understand it. And it was it was a really enjoyable match, man. Um the power bomb from the apron that uh, Sasha's got her, 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 her Naya in a power bomb position as she's holding onto the ropes. Bailey sort of pulls her through the ropes, does a, a cutter or a stunner on her, um, followed by Sasha going and delivering the power bomb onto Naya, which was really cool. Again, a really nice, well thought out spot. These ladies are doing absolutely brilliant. Then there was loads of like attacking of Sasha's legs, sort of worrying about her ACL almost, as I was sort of watching it. I was like, what the devil is going on? And um, the uh, um, Shayna has Bailey held, uh, I think, no, she has Sasha held in like a coquita clutch and Bailey comes from behind, delivers the belly to belly, tells Sasha to go on the pin. She don't get the pin, really good. Anyway, at the end of the match has Naya coming off the top rope, cross body, both ladies are pinned. Fine, okay, they're both lose. Um, but that's not all. We get what we've been sort of waiting for. I've been quite happy to sort of just let it play out, man. But it was uh, it was the heel turning a heel again. But it was great. It was the breakup of Sasha and Bailey, and Bailey was vicious and sort of really went after the legs that had been wet throughout the match. Really sort of targeted them, got her in the ring, doing lots of different moves to her. Ends up bringing a chair into the ring. Um putting the chair on her head and a leg drop onto the chair as well. It was really cool. It, it felt vicious. Um, I, I, I wish there was a little bit more to it, something. I don't know what, just a little bit more to sort of set it apart from, from every other sort of heel turn. But the, the leg spot with the head was really nice. And Sasha is out. Sasha out cold. Bring the ambulance. Goes in the ambulance. Along with Biggie. <laughs> and the Fiend. It was probably in the ambulance still. Um, great. Great. It was a good moment. I really enjoyed it. Uh, uh, let us know in the comments below what you thought of this moment. Was it right to do it now? Um, I wasn't bothered if it happened now or later. I, I, I enjoyed it when it happened and it was cool. And these ladies are doing great work. And what's next for Bailey, man? Like, you want to keep her and Sasha away. So Sasha goes away for a while. And that's why I quite enjoy the story. Like save it for when we've got fans or Royal Rumble or WrestleMania or what have you. Um, but we're getting to see Sasha versus face and Bailey's a heel. And it's, you know, everyone remembers that sort of wonderful Brooklyn match. And now we're going to get part two of it, but with the roles reversed and I can't wait to see it. 
Uh, also, another really interesting move in the match was Sasha Banks. Like Dakota Kai is doing this face wash at the minute, and it's a beautiful face wash. Sasha Banks is doing exactly the same thing with her knees. It's great, beautiful, beautiful. Um, back from commercial, we get a recap of it. Sami Zayn makes his entrance. He's the, he's the. It almost felt. I didn't know if the women's segment should have been the last segment, or if it was the last segment, we would have just known it was coming. Maybe that's why they put it there. But then this sort of didn't really matter as much, you know. I got that sort of feeling. I I I was uh, satisfied with my with my wrestling viewing for the evening, if you like. Um, it was really good. Um, he comes out, um, talks about how he should have his titles as the Intercontinental Championship, even though he couldn't see the titles or whatever. It's, it all felt a little bit WWE all of a sudden, whereas we've just seen something really cool. Uh, then Jeff Hardy comes out to confront him, saying, look, I, you know, if you want a match with me for the title, we can have a match. And Sammy Zayn says, no, 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 you should be asking me for a match. And then AJ Styles comes out and they all get into a brawl and then they all disappear. And yeah, fine. It carries on the feud. It's going to be a triple threat clash. Champions, cool. Um, but I think everyone was still sort of reeling after the Sasha Bailey thing, or certainly I was. Um, after that, we get um, heavy machinery backstage. Uh, obviously, they've lost the money in the bank briefcase. Miz and Morrison open it up. There's a sandwich in it. It's actually just a pack lunch box. Some money in the bank briefcase. Ta da! I mean, whatever. Cool. Maybe someone found it funny. I didn't. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, King Corbin cuts a promo uh, complaining about Jay Uso being included in the match. Uh, Matt, Re- oh, we get a new episode of the Firefly Funhouse. Really quick episode. Bray says, uh, "Oh, we're getting a, a new new visitor to the Firefly Funhouse. Someone new. Something new's coming." And in the, but my was completely caught off. Like I didn't even really listen to what he said because the sister Abigail doll, she had like, it was like a jaw was removed, and it was like a pink sort of sides on the jaw really like weird i don't know I, was that new is that just something i've not seen before uh, then we get an alexa and nikki segment nikki's watching a tv um obviously teasing that it's either going to be nikki or alexa that's joining the fiend uh, nikki's watching tv and alexa comes to her she's got she's got loads of uh oh what they're called uh dreadlocks in her hair now. She's turning. She's turning. And she sort of says, oh, are you okay? The, actually, the, they didn't say anything. Um, it was... But in the background was Rambling Rabbit. My only problem with that, right, is I get... And someone in the chat said, like, look in the background, you'll see Rambling Rabbit. And it's like, yeah, you can really see it, though, because it's really obvious. It's not, like, subtle anymore. Do you remember, like, the first puppet cameos that were, like... You had to go on YouTube to watch them to find where the puppets showed up as they sort of walked past them or something like that. Really subtle stuff. This is really in your face subtle. I'm rambling rabbit in the background. Probably Bruce Pritchard but before, behind her. Uh, Alexa apologises to Cross for last week, the hug, and Bliss walks off and Nikki's left looking. Solemn, who's going to join Nikki? Uh, uh, Alexa, both of them, who knows I mean, but it's cool, I think there's some really interesting stories going there, and it was just enough, it was just enough to sort of move on here's a story beat, and let's move on King Corbin versus Jey Uso, versus Matt Riddle versus Sheamus, for a number one contenders match was the last match, and it it was really good, I mean, Matt Riddle was in the ring Matt Riddle's really, really solid in the ring, um and and it, actually, Seamus and Corbin did some really great work. And Jay was great as well. Look, they all did a really good job. There, there was some really nice unison stuff that the two heels were doing, sort of dropping um, dropping the two faces at the same time, one with a, a, a end of days and the other with a, a, a whatever Seamus did. Irish cares. It was it was really well done. Um, Jay gets thrown out eventually over the audience, the first sort of uh, interaction we've seen with them screens around the audience. And then um, after that, it looks like Matt Riddle's going to win. He gets his bro, bro to, what is it called? The jump he does. It is called, oh, there was a commercial between this as well. There shouldn't have been a commercial. That was a bit annoying. Uh, bro to sleep, that's the word. Uh, so he goes for that, delivers it. And as he lands, he follows through, and Jey Uso comes, whoo, lands on him, and gets the pin. We're getting Jey Uso versus Roman Reigns at Clash of Champions, or are we? I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if we are or aren't. 
But thinking about it, whether we're getting in Clash of Champions or whether it's just part of the story beats leading up to it, it makes sense. It makes complete sense. How do you turn Roman more heel? You have him destroy his family. That's what he's going to do. I really enjoyed that. Um, I really, you know, this this episode, apart from the sort of heavy machinery stuff, which didn't really appeal to me, um, was a really solid night. Like that women's match was a great match, really good. Um, I really enjoyed watching it tonight with you guys. It was. It was awesome. So give me a whole year stars. It's getting a three and three quarters, which I think is really high because I've not been that high on WWE for a while. Um, you know, NXT had some wonderful wrestling on, but this had a lot of story and a, and a real nice through line with Roman. I was surprised he didn't come and attack at the end. But if they've got the story all ready to go, then I don't mind. If, it, if they've got the next few weeks planned out of how this is going to work with Jay, fine. Save it for me. That's all good, man. That's all good. Um, so in terms of favourite performer, um, poor Sasha, man. Sasha was great tonight. Selling of the legs was outstanding. Um, and, and she made the heel turn look great as well. And, and Bailey, man, Bailey. Bailey's fire. But the look she gave it was like Ken Shamrock. You know, and at, at the start of September over the last three years, I think she's turned on Becky uh, two years ago, Charlotte last year, and... Sasha this year, September, it's Bailey time, um, <laughs> so first turn next year maybe, uh, no I really enjoyed it guys, I, I thought it was great, so um, yeah, that's sort of my opinions of it, and what else do I need to do, best match obviously, the Shayna, Shayna, Naya, I still don't like the fact Naya's in there, I wish I had sort of someone else in there, because the bits with her just look a little bit sloppy for me, but hey ho, it was a wonderful, wonderful night, I had a great time, it was the best WWE main roster show that I've seen for a long time. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, hello, everyone in chat. Mr. Wrestling Hands, thank you so much for joining us. I will read out all your comments, mate. Uh, Kobe, thanks for joining us again, mate. You've, you've joined us on several live streams tonight, uh, as well as Jack, um, and also filmed one with me earlier as well, Kobe. So that's awesome. Thank you so much. I'm uh, going to read through your comments and then uh, go to bed. <laughs> uh, hi, all. Washed up and brushed my teeth in Olympic time. Nice one, Jack. Um, thank you for staying with us. I hope you've enjoyed it all tonight. It's been a good laugh. Uh, SmackDown was the show we deserved after this last Raw. It was. WWE should do a retire Raw until Survivor Series and then bring it back. Retire SmackDown and carry on like that until each of the big four. Also, WrestleMania to be at Spiders, which is a local uh, goth nightclub in Hull. Rock and roll, yeah, I'll go for that. Uh, I love Otis uh, shirt, body and steak. Mr. Wrestling Hands. I mean, thanks for coming in, but that's that's obscene. <laughs> It was fine. It, it was comedy. It was a decent match, actually. To be honest, Heavy Machinery looked quite powerful in it. Uh, I like Bailey's heel work, but she doesn't give that heel vibe. Okay, Mr. Wrestling Hands. Um, I get it, and I really like that smile she did in the corner. Where she's like, mm, that's cool. It was like, uh, it reminded me of Ken Shamrock, seriously. Uh, hi, Mr. Wrestling Hands. Uh, don't be like Silver, join the Dark Order. Uh, love to see Dakota Kai in a feud with Bailey. Yeah, so would I. I quite like Dakota Kai, so yeah. And I think the styles would really match nicely. And they've both sort of had that face. Because uh, Dakota Kai was basically a bit of a rip-off of Bailey, wasn't she? Wasn't she? Pretty much. Um, but seeing her in a feud with Bailey, yeah, I'd go for that. There's rumours that Sasha wants to take time off to try and get pregnant. No. No, they can't do that. I mean, she can. Good for her if that's what she wants. Guessing that Becky vibe is going around on being mothers. No, that's got to be rumours. We've got to have the match, man. We can't leave this a couple of years. This has to be like Rumble or Mania. If not, you do it at Clash of Champions. It's how I'd sort of feel about it. They're not going to keep her off for like two years and expect us to come back and still have heat, are we? Bailey could be in a completely different place then. Bailey could be pregnant. If that's true, that's, uh, I mean, good for her. You know, if she wants to have a baby, that's awesome. But, like, then WWE needs to give us a payoff. They can't just leave us with no payoff. That wasn't the payoff. The payoff is the match. Um, but, yeah, cool. If she is, good for her. If WWE wants to keep Jeff, he needs to win the Royal Rumble next year. Uh, they're, not, they're not keeping Jeff. 
Jeff's not staying. Uh, look, he's, his brother's in AEW, and his brother's been able to creatively do what he wants to do. And, you know, Jeff has always... Look at the TNA stuff, sort of when Jeff was a little bit off the handle as well. And it was it was, it was was his brother that sort of got him back on board and gave him this Brother Nero character to help um, make him not have to do the spots that he was doing and stuff like that and actually work on some character work, which Jeff really enjoys but just never goes for because he, he just wants to give the fans what they want and think, thinks that the fans, what, what they want to see is him giving up his body. And, you know, um, good for him. Like, he's amazing. Uh, I've seen Jeff Hardy and I'm really happy, like, seeing him. But... At the same time, I want to see him healthy and, and be able to do this for as long as possible. And I think that him and Matt will have a great time in AEW. You imagine with a bit of creative freedom, like they had in TNA, or they had full creative freedom in TNA, but the right amount of creative freedom along with the storylines that you can have. And look at AEW's tag division. Do you need to say any more? Add Matt and Jeff Hardy to that. Yes, please. Yes, bloody please. Uh... Nah, Becky's just getting away from Seth as he looks like he stinks. Yeah, he does, man. Uh, I found the sandwich promo funny. Yeah, it was fine. Uh, it was fine. It was, it was fine. Uh, pink for Alexa. Yeah, she's getting more pink. She's getting some dreadlocks. She's going to be listening to reggae next week. It's going to be great. Uh, Ginny's here. Welcome, Ginny. Uh, all right, Kobe, thanks for joining us. Uh, Jack says, Bailey looked as intense as Dan the B7. Yeah, she did. She did. She looks evil. Uh, Kobe talks about wrestling. This week's shows are in order of worst to best. Uh, yeah. Um, worst, Raw. Uh, next, NXT. Next, AEW. And next, SmackDown. I think I agree. I think I agree, Kobe. Exactly in the order. Um, and when you think, NXT was still an enjoyable show. So we've actually had a decent uh, night of wrestling. So I wonder where All Out is going to slot into that. Interesting. We'll have to see where it where it goes in. By the way, Kobe, I watched your review prior to doing my podcast because uh, it's so so such so short and sharp, and uh, it was a really good review. I, I you know I agree with everything you said. I said it. It's, it was a fun night. Jack says he enjoyed it, and I'll still write timestamps up. Thank you so much, Jack. I do appreciate it, my friend. Uh, yeah, because people are going to want to watch the reaction to the uh, heel turn from Bailey, are they? So yeah, man. I mean, I, I've I've had a great night. I've had a great day. Like watching some great. Actually, there we go, Kobe. Where does WCW get put into this? You've 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 put Raw, NXT, AEW, and SmackDown. Um, so as I'm signing off, see if you can get that off. Um, no, thank you, Kobe. Um, cool. So um, yeah, tomorrow night, all out with the rest of the story. Come and. Uh, I give me a review and hear my review. Uh, five. Dark Order hands. Five stars. Does that mean that's better than? Uh, does that mean that's better than? Than AEW this week, Mister Wrestling Hands. Five hands, yeah. It's like half a Sean Spears, I suppose. I enjoyed it. I thought it was great. Um, cool, rock and roll. Um, if Kobe's. You deserve it, Kobe. Yeah, man, Kobe's doing great on his channel, mate. He's doing really well, so... Uh, and it was great having him on the channel earlier on. You missed that, Mr. Wrestling Hands. We did a WCW watch-along. 25 years today since the first ever Nitro. Uh, so, yeah, cool. We're all out tomorrow. We'll be in about half an hour before All In's on. We'll probably do some predictions or something for the show. Uh, can't wait, dudes. Can't wait. It's going to be a fun night. And we're doing the pre-show, because, like... I'm not missing Britt Baker and Big Swole. Like It's supposed to be some sort of cinematic match because of uh, Britt's injury still, which is going to be great. What's... Mr. Wrestling Hands has give it either five hands or five potatoes. Was that a cork from a bottle of bubbly? Uh, <laughs> rock and roll, I don't know. Um, if you could leave a like on the video, it really helps. Um... Actually, no, I tend to upload it, so you don't even need to leave like a... I have to re-upload it. Here's, 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 this is annoying. So when I live stream these things, like if you try and look for my live stream that I've just done now, you can't find it, right? And if I was to leave this to upload itself, it would process, and it would like, upload tomorrow, like in the afternoon, when it's no longer as relevant. So I need to like edit it and then upload it again. It's really annoying. Really annoying. Problems with live streaming. <laughs> 
I watch it and I can't get over that Lex Luger turtleneck shirt. No, none of us can, man. It's, it's turtleneck shirt. What the devil is that? Um, I've had a great day today, so thank you all for 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 staying with us, and uh, I hope you can join us next time. And um, here's Biggie to sign us out. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, give me a whole year, everyone. Whole year, whole year, whole year. This is Big E from the New Day. Give me that whole year. Give it to me. I need it.